Yeah, the greatness streak had to end at some point, but I was thinking that wouldn't end until after the nine-parter concluded. I was wrong. Now, does this make it bad? No. Does it make this episode bad? No. But it is pretty disappointing considering how most of this nine-parter up to this point has been just great, 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 great. Like, they've all been great. But this one, it's the weakest one so far. And it's a shame because it has one really great character moment for Armin. But let's try to break it down step by step. And like I said in my previous one, I have to rush these a little bit because I want to get everything done. So I'm not so far behind tomorrow. Alright, let's dive in. What's up? What's happening? It's going by. Welcome back to Anime Station. It was Japan and Dean. Everything Mission including TV moves as well. I'm your host, Jackson Small. Welcome to my review of Attack on Titan Season 1, Episode 10, Response, The Struggle for Trust, Part 6. Yes, we are almost done with this arc. Like, we are very, very close to being done with it. And this episode is very good. But it has one huge problem. It is weighed down heavily, very, very heavily, by exposition. A lot of long-winded, meaningless expo exposition. Because I'm just going to say right now, there is no action in this episode at all. It's all just a debate between... Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa against the garrison. That's pretty much the whole episode. So, this is going to be a bit of a shorter one than usual, because there's not really a whole lot to talk about. So, let's just run through it real quick. Let's talk about the overview. Aaron's sudden transformation comes as a shock to both the garrison and his fellow cadets. Armin decides to put his life on the line and argues for Aaron's sake before the captain, but the man's unmoved. However, the confrontation is resolved with the arrival of Commander Pixis. Yes, I know how to pronounce his name now. Who desires to follow the plan which Armin has devised to seal the breach in Wall Rose using Aaron's Titan powers. So, yeah, there's not really a whole lot to talk about with this episode. I mean, there's one scene with Daz trying to commit suicide because he doesn't want to get killed by a Titan and Marco has to go in and stop him. Okay, I mean, we've already seen this before. Uh, we see Wellerman and Rico witnessing Aaron's powers. Okay. And this is really Armin's episode. Because Armin gives an incredible salute and speech to the captain to try and convince him with all his heart and might to spare Aaron and not kill him or Mikasa either. And there's also a great moment where they're inside the decaying titan carcass because since it's a partial titan, uh, Aaron's able to pull out of it without the whole thing falling apart immediately. Like, it does fall apart, but it's gradual, so it gives them some time, not to mention there's a whole lot of smoke from the cannon blast. So, they have time to strategize. And this is once again where Armin's best aspects come into play. He's a strategist, and he knows how to talk. And there is a great scene here where he realizes that he's not a burden and that he's actually a very beloved friend of both Aaron and Mikasa, despite what he thinks of himself. And this gives him the inspiration to walk out to the captain, drop his mobility gear to make it look like he's not a threat as much as possible, and gives an incredible speech. I'm not going to be able to find the speech because it, that would just take way too much scrolling. But it is an amazing speech. I highly recommend you look it up for yourself on YouTube. It is one of my highlights of the show thus far. Right up there with Aaron's speech from the Graduation Day episode. Very, very good speech. And thankfully, Pixis comes in and stops them all from being killed, even though the captain's not moved. But he does end up moving some of the soldiers temporarily. And then... Pixis has some questions for Aaron. He does hear Aaron out. He saves their lives. And they come up with the plan to use his Titan powers to lift this giant boulder to plug up the wall, the hole in Walrose. 
And that's pretty much the episode. It's a lot of exposition dumping. It's a lot of talking. And it's pretty much, very much, a setup episode for the next one to come. So, yeah. I mean, outside of that, it's a great episode for Armin. But, I, but besides that, it's just really good and nothing more. Here's my final thoughts. It's a great character episode for Armin and has some stellar voice acting from Christopher Sabat. Yes, Vegeta is voicing the captain. But a lot of long-winded exposition weighs it down drastically from the previous episodes in this massive multi-parter. It's still a very good episode, but sadly not quite great and is so far the weakest part of the nine-parter struggles for trust thus far. And uh, credit to Armin's voice actor, Jesse James Grell, who also does an amazing job in this scene. So, yeah, final verdict for this episode, 7 out of 10. It's disappointing, but it's still very good, and even though it is a lot of exposition, it's good exposition. Like, I wish it wasn't so heavy on exposition, but it works for what they were trying to do, and Armin definitely saves it from being average. So, how will it continue on? Well... We'll talk all about next time when we get to part 7 of Struggle for Trust.